Hi, I'm Jill Stannard. I'm a naturopath and mentor. And I'm just starting a series today of interviews with people who I find inspiring working authentically in the health space. So whether you're interested in learning more about living a healthier life or you're a health professional who'd like to pick up some business tips or learn more about other people, what other people can offer your clients, I hope you'll enjoy this interview. And of course, if you do, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when there's a, a new video. Plug over. <laughs> uh, today I'm talking with Anna Hearn and Anna is the founder of Haven Wellness here in the inner west of Sydney. Haven's a body positive fitness and yoga studio but there's a whole lot more to it than that and it's Anna's holistic vision and determination that I personally find really inspiring. I mean she's got me to go to fitness classes. <laughs> Pretty good thing. <laughs> so welcome, Anna. Thank you so much for coming here today. Thank you so much for having me, Jill. It's such a pleasure to hang out with you in the studio, but also like outside of the yeah, studio. Too. <laughs> it is, right. So Haven's not your typical gym. In, it doesn't in any way, shape or form. Um, so can you just explain a little bit more about what Haven's about? Of course. That's exactly pretty much how I describe it to people. When people first come into Haven, I let them know that it's not like your traditional gym or yoga space. Um, and certainly <clears throat> those that are really centered on diet culture. Um, so Haven came to me uh, almost as an experiment. Um, and it was, it was my response to being a fitness professional, so being a personal trainer in a traditional gym setting. Um, but I was learning about health at every size, the non-diet approach and body positivity, uh, fat positivity, body neutrality. And I dived into this for my own personal journey, my own growth. And for me, it was like a light bulb. So as I learned about health at every size, it all made sense to me. I was coming out of uh, decades of disordered eating, a terrible relationship with my body and food. And it was all, you know, <clears throat> focusing on the pursuit of thinness, which is so um, so kind of normalized in our current society. So health at every size offered a different paradigm, a different approach, and it's a weight neutral approach rather than the weight centric approach, which is um, yeah, what society sort of built on. Um, so I kind of just dived myself into that, learned about it all, listened to podcast after podcast, lots and lots of walking and listening and reading and books and then um, connecting with people online. Um, then I worked with a coach online who was wonderful um, and then I did some professional courses and then of course I couldn't help but want to share this professionally and, and more so than that, it was more that I couldn't ethically continue being in the fitness world, um, following the traditional approaches, selling people protein shakes and putting people on scales every month and um, making assumptions and judgments based on size and shape and I just couldn't ethically do it so um yeah that's in a nutshell how Haven started and um we've just really grown and sort of blossomed from there and so Haven's not just about you know working out with a personal trainer or going to yoga classes or doing other classes it's kind of a lot more than that it's a it really is a community so can you share yeah. a bit about what the community is yeah, sure. Community is like super, super important to me. And um, part of um, what makes it so special is the community. And I always had that in my vision, I guess. So at the start, like I said, it was a opening haven was a little bit of an experiment in response to being in traditional gym culture and wanting to pull away from that and offer something different. Um, but as part, I knew immediately as I opened up that I wanted it to be about people and community. And I think it's because in my journey, the things that were really powerful for me, the things that kind of worked or gave me some value um, the whole time, you know, over the decades of trying to kind of fix in my body, which was ultimately about trying to control and maintain this perfect body. Um, the things that worked were the community. So I tried all sorts of groups and psychologists and one-on-one -on -one therapies and um I worked with um, coaches and things and um, professionals, but when I did the group stuff, that was what I found real value in and having a safe space to be able to talk and share and have other people kind of validate your ideas, your thoughts and like minds. Um, a lot of disordered behavior around food and um, the thought patterns we have around our bodies are very secretive and can be really isolating. So I just found that so, so valuable and powerful. 
So that's why I wanted to create that at Haven. Um, so we've been um, lucky enough to be able to offer our members not just the yoga stuff and the movement stuff, the gym stuff, but we've welcomed in other practitioners to work with um, so that we offer this support for those looking to heal their relationship with food and body. So yes, there's yoga classes. Yes, there's personal training, small group fitness classes, but we also do bushwalks. We do socials. We went out to the pub on Saturday, which was lovely. Um, we do, and we have an intuitive eating work group coming up um, where I'm kind of facilitating a space for people to explore that, uh, that approach. And then we have our practitioners as well who often offer talks and other opportunities to work with them in healing their relationship with food and body. So you've got a, a non-diet nutritionist? Non-diet nutritionist, non-diet dietitian, um, a counsellor, and uh, we're looking at having an art therapist join us. Mm. We also have actually a beauty therapist, and um, we are potentially having another practitioner join us, a kinesiologist as well. So a few different um, areas of expertise, but um, those who really work in that non-diet space, so the dietitian, nutritionist, and counsellor, they all come from that lived experience experience like myself so there's a real level of kind of understanding and empathy and having gone through learned about the health at every size non-diet approach for their own purpose their own journey um, I think that really adds to what they can deliver to the clients and you got a book club you book club got... yes how could I forget you've had dancers <laughs> you've had all sorts of really delightful oh, yeah. things and I've got to say I mean I've never joined a gym so I can't compare that but my sense of haven is that it really is a community and it's really something quite different um the I suppose also too you started as a bit of a one-woman band didn't you uh, yes. so how, many, oh gosh, how many um yoga teachers and trainers do you have at the moment so now we have a team of about 12 um, and a lot of, you know, uh, we have three trainers, so three um, kind of full-time trainers and then we have our yoga teachers who do a few classes here and there. So all up, we have this lovely team of, um, um, yeah, around 12, then we've got the practitioners as well. So we're definitely like a growing community in that way, which is lovely. But yeah, I started off as a one-man band. It was myself in a little room and um, yeah, it just grew from there. And how long ago was that? When did Haven actually start? Haven was three this year in January. So we are, yeah, rolling along our third year. So it's been a bit of a journey. You grew up on the west coast of uh, the mainland, the South Island of New Zealand. So career-wise, what, you know, what's the journey been from the west coast to the inner west? It's been a roller coaster in a way. <laughs> I definitely did not see myself looking back as a studio owner or somebody even in fitness. Um, but my, my first career was um, actually at Greymouth Intermediate School. So I was a receptionist or like the right-hand woman to the receptionist or the, the, I think she was the senior administrator. And I loved it. I really actually loved admin. I loved sort of liaising with the students and the parents and um yeah, I really enjoyed that. And then I worked at a little backpacker bar cafe in Fox Glacier. So a lot of people do that on the West Coast. In our little town in Greymouth, there's not a whole lot going on <laughs> for young people. And um, so often you'll sort of move around a little. I spent a bit of time there. Again, I really loved it because I had the ability to, I was, I was receptionist, I was cook, I was cleaner, I was wearing all hats. And I think this is something that has sort of carried through with me throughout the rest of my career, being um having to like being thrown in the deep end sometimes and having to wear all hats and be a bit of a jack of all trades and just learn lots of things and just get your hands get your hands dirty get in there um and I think that does tend to work well with my kind of personality in that and all of these roles too have been you know getting to know people and, and building relationships with people um and what and then, to Australia Oh, I followed my sister, so my older <laughs> sister. Um, again, that's a common sort of trajectory of um, Kiwis. I think the plan was initially to spend some time, save some money and go travelling. Yeah. And that didn't happen until 10 years later. So I spent um, all of my 20s in, in, in Australia. I was in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, and then I took off to London for a few years. And then I, I came back to Sydney. Um, but during all that time... My background was in, so I ended up managing small, crazy, creative business owners. And I always joke that now I am the small, crazy, creative business owner. <laughs> um, 
but again, I've had to, you know, wear all hats, do a bit of everything. Um, and that I think that's really supported me in what I'm doing now. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, what, what in particular have you found really invaluable from your past work life to being a small business owner? I think it's that, just having to um, hit the ground running, um, be able to um, respond to whatever is needed in the moment. Um, and I've always had, on the outside certainly, this sort of calm persona and people often say, and I think that's why my bosses, I was always like an executive or a PA um, to the bosses. And so they would, they loved that. They found that really helpful because it would keep them, you know, um, calm and everything um, with all the stresses that a small business um, can offer. So I think I can maintain that sense of calm. There might be a bit of crazy stuff going on under the surface, but I guess with my yoga practice and sort of running practice and that too, I've been able to manage that a little bit, my anxiety, which is definitely um, a big part. Actually, anxiety is a big part of what got me heavy into exercise. Um, of course, alongside wanting to change my body, which was initially what <laughs> drove me into committing to exercise. Yeah, it, it's actually interesting you talk about that connection from disordered eating to exercise, potentially over exercise. It's a common movement of the problem sideways. Mm, definitely, see as, as women get a bit older or out of their teens. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking back to your process when you know unlike your typical fitness studio or gym which is about trying to get people in and get them in for life and what I call kind of homeopathic memberships we'll get that money off you for a year we'll just keep taking that money out of your account your account yeah. you're almost well you, you actually don't let some people join up <laughs> you know yeah. <laughs> it's an yeah. I mean, this is what I think about you know you have such strong values and determination and vision which yeah. is what makes your business so unique so yeah how do you know how, how does that process go in yeah that's a great question well I like I said I knew that community was always really important to me and that's what I wanted to bring to the um to the studio and I realized I mean, it was just clear to me it was always clear to me that we, I know that what we're doing is quite niche. So just to talk a little bit about sort of health at every size and body positivity and that health at every size in a nutshell is about respect for all bodies. Um, that's how I describe it. It's about um, helping, so as a fitness professional in a hay space, we help all members find compassionate ways to move and take care of themselves, regardless of shape or age or weight or anything. There's no assumptions there. We're just helping the individual and we want to try to help them from a really yeah, compassionate space. We also recognize the inherent diversity in bodies, which I think is totally disregarded in a lot of traditional gym spaces where we assume, and we're certainly taught this that even you know as a trainer, learning to be a trainer, to ask the client what's their goal weight and then magically design them a program and tell them how to eat and then they do that and then magically they have this perfect body mm -hmm. and if they don't then they've done something wrong that's the kind of message but health at every size is about honoring and respecting recognizing the diversity of bodies recognizing the changes that bodies go through and also recognizing the um social determinants of health and um you know a lot of things around this sort of way of clean eating and organic eating these days is very privileged and yeah. so recognizing that that's not sort of available for a lot a lot of people as well um so oh my gosh what was your question again <laughs> i was talking about you know to, you know it's kind of like an anti-business model in a way That's that right. you it's not like hey come in try a class it's like i want yeah. to talk to you first and just make sure we're the right fit yeah that's right of course and so kind of how do you i'm just thinking too i mean there are times i know when you've kind of suggested that somebody mightn't be a good fit how yeah. does how does that feel yeah, it's interesting. Um, again, it's um, because community is so important. And so it was really clear that, you know, offering this niche um, space, that it, it is a little bit um, like, I mean, people in the fitness world think I've got two heads. They think I'm nuts, not selling weight loss, not buying into that um, yeah. that's an ideal. And so a lot of people aren't ready for that or they're not, they haven't been exposed to it. Maybe they are curious about it. But um, the most important thing to me is to protect the culture and protect the community that we have built over these years. And there are people and a lot of our members come here because we offer this safe space for women. 
And I know that if I was to, if there was the, the wrong kind of energy in here and there was, um, I mean, I know how I feel and I have, how I've felt in the past in different um, fitness and gym settings. And when I used to run a running club and um, going to traditional gyms, there is that judgment and there certainly can be, it can be really strong sometimes. And I've felt that before. Um, and that comparison and with the body transformation images everywhere and the message that, you know, you're not okay if you're in a bigger body. Um, and that can be just so damaging to, to people, especially those who have had a messy relationship with food, exercise their body, those who have had trauma from other gyms and personal trainers, which is really quite common. So it was just very clear to me that I want to protect that. Mm -hmm. And I know that letting in that energy that just doesn't sit with that well, it's just going to interfere with our people's, our, our communities enjoying the space here. So that overrides, you know, that's, that's very powerful for me to um, maintain that so it's interesting I have battled with this a little bit because we're trying to be body inclusive but yet here we are being kind of exclusive but <laughs> I think it um it, it definitely like our members really really um appreciate us doing that and I'd love to take the time to sit down with everybody and hear their story and and it's very clear if they are probably not interested in body neutrality if they're not willing to explore the concept of um, fat positivity in that that they might not be gone, that they might not get value from being here. Um, so that's what I let them know. And um, it doesn't really happen that often because by the time that they've made the appointment to see me, they've usually done a little bit of looking into our website and that. Yeah. And I'd say, as a consumer point of view, as someone who uses your business, um, it really is every size, um, as in you've got, you know, people of all all sizes, it's not only people who would identify as being larger. Yeah. Uh, and I think what was really special for me is that although I had done yoga in my teens um, and early 20s, what really put me off returning to yoga, even though I knew it would be really therapeutic and good for my body, was what I called the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the really stretchy, skinny, bendy, you know, green smoothie, yeah. you know, that, that, whole, <laughs> that whole thing that yoga has become so yeah. I do yoga and have a yoga teacher say oh actually for those who've got bigger brains you might want to try this position or you know it's one of this it really is taking things into account and it's not that culture of you know you, you, you've got to bend you know you, you've got to really burn and bend and do that sort of stuff it's about being in touch yeah. with your body which so yeah. much of this body industry of fitness is the opposite of it's ignore your body work through the pain it's the totally, totally opposite which is that's what i think that vision is just so special yeah now haven's in its third home in three years so let's yeah. you've missed this things here so you've grown each you know with floor space each time um you know so you've had a bit to do with commercial real estate agents <laughs> you've got any what's your what's your tips for anything, anything that you, anything you'd like to share with somebody else yeah. who's thinking about taking on a premises for their business. Well, my number one tip is follow your intuition. Um, I can't tell you how often that has um, proven um, to work, um, and the times that I have sort of ignored that, then that has shown up as well. So, um, I think take um get good advice so find it would be, you know would have been great if i'd have found a lawyer to work with at the start who really kind of got the business and um understood like maybe somebody that i could communicate really well with too i did um end up working with a lawyer who was um for want of better language um just an older gentleman who i just didn't have anything kind of to connect us together um and um, it just felt like a waste of waste of time. Like it was just doing the bare minimum in that. And um, I had to go through that when I went through a pretty tricky um, end of lease with the last place. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's my main tip, like follow your intuition. Yeah, because yeah. that, that has never really let me down. It's kind of having the courage to follow your gut, even if your head's saying, but this makes good sense to do, to do this, if your gut's saying no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 2020, the, one of the words of the year that we love or hate was pivot and probably 
the, one of the most monumental pivots in business that I witnessed was you. I mean, you basically got your studio business online on a weekend, you know, like over a weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, it was crazy <laughs> looking back. Is there anything you see from all that? <laughs> I think um, looking back, you know, and like what we we're talking about before with having worked in different small businesses where you're just like doing this and that and hitting the ground running, that kind of um, energy I had to apply to this. Um, so I made a decision to transition everything online and I presented that to members and I said, this is what we're doing. And I just got the ball running um, straight away. And then I invited members to reach out if they had any challenges that came up or any financial um, concerns and that. And that, that did happen for a few people. But to be honest, most people stuck with us. And it was so, um, you know, we were so lucky and we had the community online throughout the whole thing. So it was, it was a bit of a novelty at the start, connecting with people online. And we had Friday night hangouts with a glass of wine and their homes with their cats and animals yeah. and everything. And that was fun. Um, but I did um, make that transition really quickly. And I, I, I took a little bit of advice. I was, I was watching what other studio owners were doing overseas because um, there were other, obviously, countries that were a bit ahead of us. Yes. Um, so I was kind of um, getting a few ideas from them. And then I learned as, as I went. So, yeah, it was um, the, the world of Zoom came alive all of a sudden. <laughs> and I, I was so lucky too. Our team was very, um, mostly very respondent and very um, just jumped in with us and were willing to give it a go and just work through the challenges as we went. Um, and that made things a lot smoother. Those, those teachers and trainers who could just pivot with me was wonderful, was really valuable, yeah. And we're, we're recording this in May, 2021, where life in Sydney is relatively back to normal. There's very few restrictions. So is anything of that pivot model that you've kept now, now that your face-to-face your -face business is, is relatively back to normal? Um, sorry, what's your question, Jill? So, is, um... it's, so do you still do some classes via Zoom? You know, those things that you had to kind of pivot to do, is anything yeah. stuck now that things are definitely yeah. yeah and I think with like with a lot of businesses we've retained doing some online classes and that's become um, a new sort of element of the business so we do have a handful of classes that just stayed as an online offering um, and then when we um, we obviously we opened the studio so we did um, we do the um, the hybrid we were teaching here we're filming and um, we've got a few people at home as well um, but it's also translated to things like for example we're doing a free talk tomorrow night with our nutritionist and we'll be live streaming that as well for those at home so these it's, it's just opened up that opportunity to connect to more people so yeah we're really lucky that that happened mm. whereas I think you know if two years ago you know someone had said to you how about you start doing some of your classes online it would be like how do we, <laughs> why how do we do that yeah. now this wonderful opportunity for people to be able to pick and choose what fits with their life so if they want to do an early morning yeah. class online before you know before they start working at home they can and um, yeah. and same with the live streaming of, of talks and things it's just absolutely yeah. things way up yeah, I think we've just kind of touched the iceberg with that too. Like I think we'll, it'll still kind of grow and evolve and it'll always be some kind of offering that's available to people. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of lastly, if somebody was thinking about starting their own health-related business, you know, now that you've had three years of this business of following your beliefs and your values, what, what would you say, you know, no matter how niche they were? Do it definitely. Like, you've got, uh, I, I think, and I've always said that with Haven, because it was this, it was like a for want of a better word, it's a bit overused, but organic. It was this organic kind of transition from getting out of traditional gym culture, getting out of diet culture for my own journey, and then wanting to um, deliver something different and just feeling really driven by that. Um, there was never any question, any doubt in my mind that I was, if I was doing the right thing or anything, I was just going with it. I think too, because of my background with managing all these different businesses and that I've enjoyed, I've always enjoyed that too. And I've enjoyed doing things like I make my own websites and I do my own designs for things. And, um, and I have, you know, dipped into marketing and accounts and all of that. So I know all that stuff as well. So for me, it was quite natural and kind of easy to bring it all together. Um, 
And so, yeah, so I was driven, driven by the message of Haven and wanting to help women and be more peaceful in their relationship with food and body. Um, but I was lucky to back it up with the kind of business experience, I guess, that I had. Um, but I think if you've got that energy and you've got that drive, you've got that passion, you've got something that you know is going to serve people, then just go for it. It's so it's so valuable. And I would never, ever look back. I don't think I could ever work <laughs> for anybody else anymore. Um, oh, yeah, I just, I just love it. Yeah. Oh, that leads to a supplementary question. So you don't have to answer the first half of it. The first half is how many hours a week do you work? But if you want to skip that and say, how, how do you find some balance? It's a good question. Um, I could probably work anywhere, I would say, between 50 and 80 hours a week. I have no idea. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is, I'm not great at balance. That is, that is something that is challenging for me. And I think because I am, I'm single, I don't have kids or anything. I don't have the boundaries in place. I don't have the, the reason to sort of be home to, to greet someone. Nobody waiting for me in that. And I think that does um, mean that you can, and I've, I've often let my boundaries be stepped all over. And so that's a constant kind of practice that I need to keep trying to bring back in um, I have you know over the three years now gotten to the point where I'm able to drop a day so I've got um, a day off and I've got a night off now um, but yeah definitely lots of hours and because um, yeah because you're just it's your business you're always in it you're always sort of checking things you find so it's helpful if you are able to put some quite firm boundaries in place I think that would really serve serve you really well is there a boundary you want to put in place now that you're working towards? Uh, I think it's um, just being able to shut off at, at night time when I'm outside, when I'm away from the studio. Um, it's very easy because we have such access to all the information on our phone. We've got, you know, the Facebook page. We've got all the emails coming through. Um, so there are lots of ways that you can switch that off and, and not pay attention, but I, I find it really tricky. So that's something that I'm kind of working on now is getting firm with the boundaries and sticking with them. Good on you. Thanks so much, Anna. I really enjoyed this chat and I think it's going to be really valuable for other people. Thank you, it. Jill. I I am, when, we, when we finish this interview, I am going to ask you for any Hayes resources tips or point me to them so I can put them in the, the notes for the interview because I'm sure people are going to be really interested in finding out some more. I've got plenty of those and I'm always <laughs> up for a chat if anybody wants to sort of bounce questions and that off me as well. And, that's, and so what's your URL so people can find you on Online. We're at havenwellness.com.au. Uh, you can find us on Instagram, Haven Wellness Studio, and Facebook as well. Excellent. Thank you, Anna. Thanks, Jill.